Ever have one of those days where you get baked into a giant pizza? Ah, scenic RP downtown! This is the version with the beach area. Huh, that's weird. I could have sworn I just felt a dent in the fourth wall I just installed. But it's not like Deadpool or is in a monologue or here on this very same map right now. Anyway... Welcome to my review of Power Rangers Turbo Episode 22, Trouble by the Slice. If you haven't seen my previous video, you can probably still guess which episode this is by the name of the episode. Yes, that's right, it's the pizza episode. It may transport any object from one place to another. However, it must be aimed carefully for... Right, right! Our episode starts with the techie villain, Porto, having built a teleporter gun. I told you it works. Thank you, thank you very, very much, thank you. You barely moved three feet! Elgar, one of the token comic relief villains, taunts the big bag, who happens to be his aunt, Divatox, who retaliates by shooting heat ray vi- Wait, okay, apparently it's an eye beam that turns things into animals. Um, Divatox, I wouldn't do that. Of course you wouldn't. <sighs> now, let's see what this thing can really do. Divatox ramps up the teleporter gun and I'm not pleased by its performance in spite of warnings from Porto. This, of course, backfired spectacularly and she lost her memory. Who am I? After the opening credits, Johnny Young, Bosch, and Leslie Crusher, I mean Adam and Justin, are talking about girls. Justin obviously doesn't care much, being a little kid and all, but tells Adam just to ask her out. Adam agrees, but is quickly distracted by some other kids playing soccer, which would be an actual storyline for this episode. Justin doesn't want to play, claiming he has homework. However, a kid accidentally kicks a ball over to them, making a proper invitation them instead of them randomly just dropping in and asking, because, you know, that wouldn't be very good. Apparently, kids in Angel Grove I don't know how to talk to strangers, especially ones clearly much older than they are. Though, I'm sure this has happened in the past plenty of times. Justin is afraid of playing because he's never played before, but Adam offers him the same exact advice Justin offered Adam about asking a girl out. Kazing! Meanwhile, Divatox stumbles upon the outside of Jungle Karma P- Oh wait, that doesn't exist yet. No, it's actually Mad Mike's Pizza Parlor. And remember that guy's name, because it'll be important a little bit later. Bulk and Skull, who are doing odd jobs at the time, are told to deliver several pizzas. We know Angel Grove like the back of our hand. Getting good, Bulky. Yeah, you know what they always say, Scovich. Women love a man in uniform. No, Bulk. Not that kind of uniform. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Talk enters right as the real main characters of the show exit and orders the pizza with jalapenos on the side and gobbles some of jalapenos up with a slice. With what money she paid for it with, I have no idea. You gonna pay for that pizza, honey? Wait, uh, wait, aren't you supposed to pay before getting the pizza? And do ya. No, as a matter of fact, I do have a cent. Wow, seductive to disgusting in under a minute. The rest of the pirates can't find her, and Elgar gets an idea. I got a better idea! <laughs> hey, look at this! Ta -da! Quit fooling around, Algar! We're in serious trouble here! Get it? <sighs> you don't get it! Uh -uh. <laughs> well, I tried! Whoa! Diva Talk? Big 
because, you know, this is supposed to be more serious than Car Ranger. Eh, then again, with Fish Tank, Cat, Elgar, Bulk, and Skull around, I don't see how I could ever take this show seriously. Really, this show's been doing a very poor job of proving how serious it can be in general. So, the male pirates go aside to go out to eat, because that's apparently something villains actually do in Power Rangers. How is this supposed to be serious again? We cut back to Wesley Crusher, who is tearing up the soccer field. Remember, he's never played before. And then we cut back to Bulk and Skull again, who are not only obviously lost, because they said they know the place by like, the back of their hand, but also they're losing pizzas. Their solution? Bulk rem eats the remaining pizzas, obviously, because he's Bulk. Back at Mad Mike, Steve talks is seen in the kitchen in uniform, the manager has no idea Bulk and Skull are lost, and Porto gets some disgusting pizzas posing as an old lady. Well hey, if Superman can pull it off with just glasses, Porto can pull it off with just an uh, outfit that doesn't even cover his face. Porto sees Diva talks and completely fails to help her. A few minutes later, Adam and kids come into the pizza place. Wow, how can we go to high school? I took some tests. I guess I'm pretty smart. You mean you're a nerd? No, he means he's a Gary Stew. If he's such a nerd, how come he tripled the ball right past and won the game? It's because he's a Gary Stew. And then Adam constantly misses Diva Talks every time they should have seen each other, Porto having ducked out and Justin occupied by an arcade machine. Some lemonade, water, and... Guys, pepperoni or mushroom? Mushroom! One pepperoni, one mushroom. That's 15 bucks even. Porto, desperate for inspiration for making a monster, chooses the mascot of Mad Mike's Pizza Parlor. You know, most places with names named after the uh, are with names in them, like people's names, are named after the guy who founded the place. And that was no Chuck E. Cheese's, though it might actually be a reference to another pizza place that it's named after its mascot, Little Caesars, which is founded by Mike Illich and his wife. Meanwhile, the manager still doesn't know that Bulk and Skull are lost, and there's a large number of complaints about pizzas with bites taken out of them. Naturally, he does this actually sensible thing and berates Diva Talks. However, Diva Talks ain't having none of his shifta. In business with customers telling me that there are I've bites got off the floor. I've got pizzas in the oven, oh. I'm peeling onions, and you're yelling at me. Mad Mike attacks some random people by throwing explosive pizzas at him. Why not? We've seen weirder powers before. Meanwhile, at the command center, I'll. Uh, uh, excuse me. Why? Why? God, why? Alpha 6, even more annoying than Alpha 5 model, contacts Adam about Mad Mike. Later, guys. Alright, bye. Come next weekend, Justin. Uh, looks like Wesley Crusher here has a new friend from playing soccer. And this is pretty much the payoff of the Power Rangers side of the story. Oh yeah, sure. When Diva Tux appears in public, no one questions her odd headgear. Not that anyone would be looking at her head. But when Elgar and the others show up, but especially Elgar, then people start to notice there's a problem. Elgar ricochets Steve Tuck's eye beams more. <laughs> Elgar, what are you trying to do to me? <laughs> yes. Oh, for the love of Anti Deus Ex 
bullshit god, what the hell is that result? Johnny Young Bosch and Wesley Crush are the last of the Rangers to arrive at the command center. The Rangers get their team cannon. Yes, the pizza episode is also the episode where they get their team cannon. This is totally how people should look when reacting to getting a new weapon. Devastate any foe. It holds immense power. So finally, more than halfway through the episode, it's time to... Shift into turbo! Wow, that accent is Master of the Sky's level of offensive. Hi! You know, I've had just about enough pepperoni mushrooms today. And I've already had enough of his accent. So, out back in town, the arrive to attack the monster only to have their hubcaps and mines overtaken by... evil... pizza. Really? Diva Dogs asked Porto to make him a giant, make her a giant oven. Because apparently he can do that. The oven randomly appears as the rangers fall inside of it. This is it. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. You're not dreaming. This is definitely cheese. <laughs> and very good at cheese too. You see, I only use the finest ingredients in my Power Rangers pizza. <laughs> You'll never get away with this. Yeah, this episode has already had enough ricocheting as it is, so please just don't do that. <laughs> then green peppers, mushrooms, and pepperoni! Oh, oh, oh. And the secret to a great pizza! Oh, cheese! <laughs> now is the time to heat things up! Notice how the controls are in large, plain English text here. And notice right behind the monster, they're in smaller Japanese text. And here comes the real problem with the scene. Not the fact that the rangers are getting baked into a giant pizza, but Blue Centaurian's reaction to seeing them get baked, having been baked into a giant pizza. Be this very large oven. I shall investigate. Oh look, there's the Japanese text again. Now, I mean, really, listen to this dialogue. One there, you require assistance? Hado. They've been cooked into a pizza. I am a sophisticated robot, but apparently I am not sophisticated enough to come properly convey a surprise tone of voice. A brilliant bit of detective work there! <laughs> Please tell me that was sarcasm. Get away from my pizza! You again? He never left, you digital dummy. Out back in hound, ease my sanity a little bit by running over to Blue Centaurion a couple times. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <sighs> However, the Rangers are now out of the oven. Outside, what? what? How did he even get it out there? When did he get it out there? Blue Centurion gets the idea to use a simple red light to free them from Mike's control. I I excuse me. Why? Why did you have to use what was clearly Signal Man Solution instead of making it a special move? Red freaking light! Really now? <sighs> Blue Centurion eventually bails the Rangers out by cutting the pizza with his blaster. That's actually a pretty clever idea. Yeah. They summon their team cannon and fail to beat Mad Mike with it, followed by... Nice! No! I am done! Really? The pizza was the worst part about this episode! How? 
How, for the love of God, was the pizza the worst part of this episode? No, the pizza was normal. Power Rangers does that kind of stuff all the freaking time. This, this is not normal. And I'll continue the review. In spite of not being defeated, Dreva talks fires her torpedoes filled with uh, whatever makes the monsters grow or something. For a giant sized pizza, you need a giant sized pizza cut. It'll be the end of me, and may actually yet be worse than Alpha 6, as far as robots go. Blue Centurion fires his finishing attack while the Jungle Fury Megazord does its finisher. This world. Yes, there is literally no difference in this attack. Well, save for the two Megazord's oddly epic pose at the end, because, you know, Car Ranger was supposed to be goofy, not epic. It's teleporting Elgar outside the sub with the payoff for the Ranger part of the show having already happened. But one wants to wonder what happened to the main characters of the show, you know, Bulk and Skull. Why didn't they show them again? Hold up, I dare not tell. Dark Decade? What the hell? Shouldn't you be bugging Zeltrex Millennium or something right now? I'm not even a part of Reviewtopia. You are, of course, assuming that I am the same dark decade. You of all people should know better than that. Ah, touché. No, you're not using that right. Yes, yes I am, actually. Enough! You will pay for baking those carburetors into pizza! Is that what this is about? It was an accident, I swear. I know it looks like... Something that would be intentional because, you know, it's not easy to accidentally bake people in giant pizzas, but come on. Lies! Lies! <sighs> Boy, I'd better save the rest of this confrontation for next time. Stay tuned.